people. Bradley, they live here from NewFury.com in Tampa, Florida today. Um, we're hanging out with some new friends of mine uh, on the Ocean Collective and Scale of Summit Tour, which is going to be pretty awesome. If you've never seen either of those bands before, you really need to do yourself a favor and check them out. Atlas Moth is pretty cool too, and uh, we're actually here with the opening band today. And uh, don't let the opening band name uh, fool you, because they are fantastic too. Actually, just put on a new record. So, why don't you introduce yourself and what you do in the band? Also, what fantastic band you play? Um, my name is Alex. I sing and play guitar in Silver Snakes. So, first question for you uh, How has this tour with the Scale of Sun and Ocean been? Um, what have the crowds been like so far? Uh, it's been awesome. The crowds have been huge. A few sold out nights already. Um, people are really into it. It's a different kind of scene for us, the metal crowd. So, um, yeah, it's been a bit different and. You know, it's, uh, we're just excited to be a part of this. We're excited when we got invited to be on this tour. And it's something that we're really looking forward to, you know, finishing out. There's a few weeks left on this. We're barely hitting the halfway mark. I think there's like 17 shows now. So we're out, the, we're out with them for a while, and uh, yeah, it's been great. Yeah, I know you guys just put out a new record on uh, Rich and I. Uh, a fantastic label, by the way. They've always put out some of my favorite releases for the especially from Defender uh, and a bunch of other bands that don't come to mind right now. Um, so, how has the reception been for that album so far? It's been awesome. I mean, it's only been out for a week, so... Uh, we don't know too much yet about, you know, what people are saying, but as far as, you know, kind of just looking around and seeing reviews and just, like, first impressions, it's been really positive and people seem to be into it. Um, I, I think a lot of people didn't know what to expect from us. We put out a 7-inch on Bridge 9 last year called Sundance, and that is completely different from the record. Um, that song, it was just a single, kind of stands on its own, so we kind of did that intentionally, so when the record would come out, we kind of threw it in the loop. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's been cool, though. People are really open to what Bridge 9 is doing, which is awesome. And, you know, they may be a hardcore label at heart, you know, that's what people know them as, but that band is, that, the kind of that label is very, um, but take it in the sense that they've always put out like a white range of stuff. You know, there's stuff to be a part of that. Alright, so uh, next question for you. Uh, you know, that 7 inch, yeah, seven inch right? yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the 7 inch you mentioned, Sundance, uh, I think you guys played the song Sundance at this uh, last song we played. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit more about, I guess, what that song is about? Maybe to you or just overall in general? Um, Sundance is a song, well, okay. <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. The, the title, I guess, kind of hints at it too. A Sundance is something that used to happen, and um, a few different Native American cultures had their own versions of a Sundance, and it's it's kind of like a tribute, and uh, a, a lot of times it would involve self-sacrifice and hurting yourself to, to gain more. And um, like Sitting Bull is one example of someone who did, he had a famous Sundance, and it's just something that I've read a lot about, and it kind of get close to home with, you know, seeing friends in abusive relationships, myself being in a situation that I wasn't too happy in, and just seeing how um, people kind of manipulate themselves into thinking that they're happy when they're, they're, they're not. They're just trying to coast through. They're trying to, like, put up with things in the meantime, just let things build up without addressing them when they should. So the whole song, I mean, the lyrics, I locked you up with a sharp knife, you locked me up with a dull knife, is just about how, like, say, in a relationship, for example, Someone could hurt the other person by saying too much, being too loud, being too aggressive. Someone could also hurt the other person by not saying enough, being dismissive, just not showing any like compassion for the other person. So the song is about that. It's it's just about hurting each other in a relationship in different ways. So you know, uh, as uh, as a journalist, I have really good experience. I've always had really good experiences with uh, Rich and Rick. You know, I, they showed me you guys, and I was. I gave it two thumbs up. So, um, what do they do as a record label that might be a little different than what some other labels do? Um, well, we haven't been working with them for that long now, so we haven't even really met a lot of the team behind everything. We've met a few of the people, but overall, they're just extremely involved. I mean, uh, we've been fortunate enough to have been, you know, hooked up with that label. And they whether it's keeping up through email, like text messages, just following us like online, stuff like that. They're, they're very involved with everything that they're making, which is awesome. 
um, it definitely feels like a family with that label. And the other cool part about it is that they don't have any other bands on that label that are like us. Um, in the sense that, you know, I kind of feel like we're the only like rock band on that label. Um, which means that when they're presented with different outlets, say they could pitch their bands to do different things or, you know, their approach with opportunities for their bands, we might be able to get some that wouldn't be as open to as far as hardcore bands go or like punk bands and stuff like that. Even though that's where our roots lie, we're definitely a bit more accessible in the sense that, you know, in a mainstream sense, I guess you could say. So, yeah, I mean, to say the least, they're, they're just a very involved label. They're very passionate about what they do. And, uh, yeah, like I said, we're excited to be a part of it. We're finally going to meet a bunch of them in a few weeks when we're in Boston. Yeah, you mentioned uh, um, coming from different scenes, but that you feel you're more accessible. Um, how exactly do you feel that you're more accessible than a lot of bands like that? I mean, that's just that's just like a kind of like a cop out of me saying that we're not like a hardcore band. You know, we're um, that whole crowd. If someone's familiar with a label like Bridge Nine, their catalog, or you know, like a lot of hardcore labels mainly. Um, there are a few, definitely, like Lemuria is a great example, Polar Bear Club, and they have their share of like indie rock bands and punk bands and stuff like that, but for the most part, I feel like we're the kind of band that you can play to the average kid on the street that listens to like the Foo Fighters or Price or whatever, and even though those aren't really our influences, that's not what we pull from, um, I feel like it, it would be easier for like Joe Schmo walking down the street to gravitate towards a band like us, just because it's just, you know, we're just like a hard rock band with melody. And even though we're into more aggressive music and uh, things of that sort, we come from, you know, a hardcore background. I spent my high school years listening to nothing but crust punk, and that's, you know, that's the stuff we're into. Um, the music that we make, I think, is, like I said, a bit more accessible to just the average person. Yeah, um, for you personally, uh, something I found out a while back when I was you know, looking at a band trying to find out more about you is that you're a producer. And I think that's totally badass to have someone who um, is, you know, on a label and touring and has something on the side that they do. And I think that's really cool. Um, so tell us a little bit more about how you got, I guess, into producing and some of the albums and bands that you've worked with. I got into it because, uh, you know, I was raised around it. I'm a seventh generation musician on my dad's side. My dad's a musician. He's produced records. He's a songwriter. And it's just it's something something from always being around studios and uh, it was just only natural and um, when it came down to it, it, it really helped out with, you know, have, have being able to do that and when I decided that I wanted to just do music for a living, he passed down a lot of things to me and, you know, I got my studio together about 10 years ago and it just kind of built itself. I was lucky enough to work with a lot of awesome bands early on. Um, I did the first Touche Amore record. I've done all their splits. I've done pre-production for them. I've done all, I've worked on every Joyce Manor record. Uh, I've done records with Zabaldo, Rotting Out, Nails, um, Betrayed, just, you know, all, all the big Southern California hardcore punk bands, whatever. I've at least worked with them on their demo or whatever it is, just, you know, through knowing people and um, whether it was early on in their career, or later on, or like a band like Joyce Manor that I still work with regularly when they do a new record, um, it's just something that you know I'm I'm really happy to be doing. It's I love working with bands that I like. You know what I mean? I don't see it as, as just a chore, as just a job. It's, um, I tour a lot, and when I'm home, I get to make records with bands. It's better than working at a desk. You know? I'm not I'm no one's you know employee. I'm, I'm, I work for myself. So. I'm there just doing what I want to do, and it happens to be making other people happy. You know? If I'm working with a band that is successful, like Touche or Joyce Man or a new band that just formed, you know, if I'm doing their demo, chances are it's going to get into the hands of some kids, and you never know, they might love it, it might be the new favorite band, they might be the next whoever, and it's just cool to be a part of that sort of thing from the beginning, from, you know, each band's inception. Yeah, you mentioned uh, working at Nails. Uh, did you produce their uh, band and all? I did the first record. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did the very first record. I think it's kind of hard to find now. Um, it was with a different lineup. It was kind of in a whole different realm of things. It was more on the TV, really dirty punk side of things, which is really cool. And now they're definitely just this, like metal, like kind of hardcore powerhouse. 
but yeah, I, I did the first record, I did the demos for it, and I worked with Todd on some new stuff after that. And it was awesome, I loved that band. So, um, you know, you mentioned uh, working at Joyce Manor. They're one of my favorite bands right now. I haven't been listening to them too long, but I really like, connected with them. Um, why do you feel like they enjoy working? Why do, you, why do you feel like a lot of bands enjoy working with you guys? I feel like it's just a comfort factor with those bands that I've worked with so many times, you know? I did Joyce Manor's first demo, and I just produced the vocals for their record that I don't even think has been announced yet, or you know what I mean? Like, they're working on a record right now, but... Uh, I know details haven't been released on it yet, but you know, I just spent a lot of time with them in the studio working on that. And I think it's just comfort, but the comfort level. Barry, the singer, um, definitely is comfortable with me working with me in the studio because you know I, I know what he's capable of, and he knows the way I hear things and trusts me, which is the best thing when you're working with someone on a record. And uh, same thing with a band like Touche and Mario. Like, I played in bands with those guys. I've known Jeremy for over 20 years. So when they need to record something, whether it's like I did their pianos, title fight, casket lottery split, I did all those and like the first record and whether it's a demo or whatever. Um, like I said, they've they've worked with me for so long at this point. It just Who you about? I just no, I can't I'm my high school. So. Can I please help train a couple of I don't have any man, I'm sorry. I need that set class. Yeah, I I'm do sorry not. I'm broke man, I'm hey. sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, wow, I got really fucking thrown off here. Um, welcome to Ebor. Yeah, welcome to Ebor. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Um, okay. Well, I guess we'll wrap this up then. But uh, do you have anything you'd like to uh, tell anyone back home, back to family, whatever? Mm -hmm. Just about stuff? not really, man. We're we're out here doing what we're doing, and when we're on the road, we kind of forget about everything. That's it. I'm, I'm treating this as an opportunity to get out there and play our new record to new people. And when we get back home and we're back to reality and all that stuff, then I'll worry about it then. So, you know, obviously love our friends and family back home and we miss them, but right now we're doing what we have to do and we're going to be doing this a lot in the next year, so it is what it is. All right. Well, thanks for doing this interview with us. It was definitely good at getting to know you. Um, be sure to check out this interview and more at thenewfury.com. And go check out the new Silver Snake directed Year of a Snake because, uh, well, I'll just say this. If I were an octopus, I would give it eight thumbs up. But I'm only human, so I can only give it two. But it's a really good record, so you can check it out. Later.